Magandang araw sa aking mga makinig. Ngayon, napag-decidean ko lang na gumawa ng short na explainer video, isang TLDR video, kung paano ba natin nakuha ang energy bands natin. So una, let's start with an atom. The energy levels of an atom is relatively easy to get since we're just dealing with the potential caused by the nucleus pull on the electron. The... Energy levels in an atom can be obtained from the finite potential well assumption and from the previous module, from the quantum mechanics module, makita natin energy levels is para siyang ginto. So yan. So makita natin, these are discrete na energy levels. But, if we now go into a electron in a crystal, The electrons in a crystal have interactions with other ions and other electrons in the lattice. The consideration becomes way more complicated since we consider a lot more interactions. And so we need to we need to find a way to simplify our solution or our way of solving the Schrodinger equation. So one way to do this is through the block theorem. So it's an important simplification. The solution to the Schrodinger equation in a periodic potential take the form of a plane wave modulated by a periodic function. This one. So the solution to the Schrodinger equation is a plane wave, ito, a plane wave modulated by this periodic function. And basically, ang ginagawa ng block theorem is we allows us to impose periodicity into our wave function solution. So instead of considering the whole range of, let's say, values of x or values of k, or the, all the values, we can just focus on a small part or a small chunk or a single period of our solution. Basically, parang periodic yung parang pseudo-periodic yung ating solution to the wave function. So we can just concentrate on a tiny bit of that solution. So another further simplification that we can impose is that the chronic penny model. So we can further simplify our considerations by imposing the chronic penny model in which the potentials experienced by an electron is simplified as if they are a series of repeating finite potential wells. So yung nasa taas, this is the real, or this is a more real crystal potential for our atoms in a crystal. In the chronic pending model, the simplified potential would look something like a series of finite potential wells. So isa, isa yan. With each of these having an energy u not on the top. So parang yun yung height ng bawat finite potential well natin. For the chronic penny model, uh, it is somewhat similar to the finite potential well. And now we consider the region from x is from negative b to a. So this is a single period. This is one period. Umulit na potential. This is periodic potential natin. The Schrodinger equations in this region, which will represent all the regions, so will be ito. So, Medyo mahirap siya kasi itong alpha and beta dyan, ito yan. So medyo complex siya, but we're not really concerned with the solution to this. We just want to see how this will turn into our energy band. So tingnan nyo na lang siya, kaya nyo na init yan. Siguro okay lang naman. Then, the general solution for these are itong form na to. To solve for the constants a1, b1, a2, and b2, we can impose the following boundary conditions that we get from yung sa formalism of quantum mechanics, the continuity at x equals 0, the periodic condition at negative b and a, and after some mathematical prowess, we'll get this. From the solution of the wave function, we'll get these relations, these equalities, and nakita natin, that these are functions of k and zeta. Where k, lahat ng nasa kaliwa natin is expressed with k. Where k is our wave number. 
And yung lahat ng nasa kanan natin, yung variable lang dyan, yung hindi natin alam, yung kailangan natin isolve, is zeta. Zeta. So nakita mo, zeta lang yung variable dyan. Yung iba dyan, constant. So this is a constant, this is a constant. So ito lang yung hindi natin alam. Zeta and zeta. Where zeta, zeta here, is just a... Where zeta is just a parang reduced form of energy, zeta is equal to the energy over the height the height of our potential wall. And this u naught is just a constant from dun sa given natin kanina. So basically, we have k, our permissible wave numbers at the left side, and zeta, permissible values of energy on the right side. We can further simplify this, or we can express this whole expression to something a bit more simpler. Ganto siya. So cosine Ka plus B, yung left-hand side natin, was, this will be just equal to F of zeta, or a function of the reduced energy of our system. Then, dito, actually, magagaling yung energy bands ng isang uh, electron sa solid. So now, the right-hand side, F zeta, from our simplified expression, would be the function at the right, or this line here. So basically, the values of energy where F zeta is between 1 and negative 1, can satisfy this equality. So, dapat yung values ni, zeta, ni F zeta is from 1 to negative 1. Since we know that cosine of anything, cosine of x, can only assume values from negative 1 to 1. So, if F zeta is between 1 and negative 1, then there is a real, real solution to this equality. So, pag valid and real solution meron tayo dito sa equality na to, this would mean that a value of zeta which enables f zeta, f zeta, malang, malang, malanding letter na yan, between negative 1 and 1, if f zeta is between negative 1 and 1, then zeta is a valid energy. It's an eigenvalue for the energy function. Or, ibig sabihin, your electron can assume that energy. Otherwise, if the value of f zeta is, is outside negative 1 to 1 for a given energy zeta, the electron cannot assume that energy, which means we have forbidden energies or energy gaps. So here, yung values, if f zeta is between negative 1 and 1, your electron can assume energies here. So pwede siya mag-assume ng energy from this point to this point. Meanwhile, if your energy or if f zeta is between, uh, is greater than 1 or less than negative 1 as in here, Yung electro, yung energy natin dito, bawal yan. This is a forbidden gap or ito yung nakita natin, band gap. Then, we can express this. Uh, plotting K, uh, plotting E versus K, will get something like this. So, ito yung energy gaps natin. Band gaps, energy gaps. And itong shaded regions natin, ito yung mga permissible energy spawns. So, ito yung energy bands. Furthermore, for every value of k between negative pi over a plus b and pi over a plus b, so since kinoconsider na nga natin na periodic yung ating system, we just consider one period of that cosine function, yung cosine k a plus b natin, so, negative pi to pi, this is just one uh, rotation in the circle, a one revolution 
the circle. Pasa isang ikot lang yun sa circle natin. Several values of zeta and consecutively e are possible. And this EK relationship is called the energy spectrum or the band diagram or the band structure. So it's energy spectrum, band diagram, or the band structure. So for example, for K is equal to zero here, we'll see that we have different permissible values of energy. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So at least one for each of these different bands, energy bands. This representation at the right, ito, this is what we call the reduced zone representation. And this determines the properties of your electrons in the crystals. An important thing to note here is that at k is equal to 0 and at the boundaries of our reduced zone representation, negative pi, negative pi over a plus b and pi over a plus b, the first derivative, or the, the first derivative of our ek relationship is equal to 0. This is just to impose the continuity of our of our function, of our periodic function, and the continuity of the first derivative of the function. So from the reduced row representation, this is sufficient to describe the uh, electronic properties of a crystal. Mula dito makita natin that all information about the allowed energy bands for a electron in a crystal is contained in the first brilliant zone of our crystal. So coincidentally, yung k na pinili natin, yung negative pi over a plus b, and yung pi over a plus b, this is actually the extents of the first brilliant zone of our crystal. So paano ba tayo napunta dyan sa first brilliant zone na yan? So in the block theorem, nakita natin, nag-transform na tayo to a plane wave with the form exponential i k x. So, meron tayo nung k. Yung k natin yan, yung ating wave number. And since, again, pag nasa periodic uh, functions na tayo, we're actually considering now the k space, the reciprocal space. Since sa reciprocal space natin, ang nangyayari is we can consolidate the different points in a lattice to parang a single point. Just, it's a mathematical construct to simplify our consideration of the periodic function. Anyways, going outside this zone, or outside the first Brillouin zone, this simply repeats the same information. Kaya sa solid state, or sa MAT E121, or MAT E23 in the future offerings, consider lang natin is yung first Brillouin zone ni Crystal. If we wanted, we can represent the EK relationship using the extended zone representation in which we extend this to values of K outside of our first Brillouin zone, but it essentially gives us the same information as shown here. It's basically the same as this one. So, either way, we get the allowed energy levels for different values of K for an electron in a crystal. So, hopefully, mas naliwanagan kayo in this explanation, and I'll catch you on the next time. So, thank you for listening.